Facebook Live with Andrew Kozlowski. Okay, old school ways, but we used to do it when we first started. Yeah, 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 yeah we're okay. excited. I am excited. All right, so tell them a little about yourself, how long you've been in the business. I want to get into some of your business lately, too. Sure, sure, sure. Tell them about how long you've been doing it and so forth. Wonderful. Uh, Andrew Kozlowski here, residential realtor, Berkshire Hathaway, St. Rose office. Um, got my license November a year and a half ago. So not too long, not too long. Right. Um, still relatively new on the scene, but I don't feel late to the party at all. I'm glad that I'm doing it. Um, this has been an incredible adventure, um, and I love it. Yeah, well, and tell me what you did before, too, so they get an idea of what you did. You sure, sure. Just person before. Too. I was, I was, and it was only recently until I moved to Las Vegas where I did sales. Before I got into real estate, I sold cars at CarMax. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to Wanda Conrad, because I ended up selling her a Toyota, um, and uh, she was the one who said, you know what, you should try and sell houses. Why don't you come check out the brokerage? And she took me and I met her here at the St. Rose office. Um, and I got to meet a lot of really cool agents. Um, I even attended the success center before I even had my license. Cause when I, I remember that. Think about it, so. I actually remember being in, the, in that staircase over there and we were walking, you were going up and I was going down. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I remember you telling me, I'm gonna do well, yeah. I used to sell cars, I can't wait to get going, yeah. what my license should be in any time. <laughs> yep, yep. So this is technically your second calendar year. Yes. Cause that November, so how did you do your first year? Uh, first year, uh, that's when, you know, the big old scary pandemic hit, um, but it didn't really slow me down, you right. know. Um, I did 15, 15 or 16 units, just shy of 4 million in inventory. Yep. Um, I had five fall out of escrow because of either lost jobs or the timing wasn't correct. Um, and I, you know, support my clients. I stood by them and I still stand by them. Um, and we'll just, when the timing is right, we'll go back. But that's what I did my first yeah, year. The pandemic, yeah, a lot of people lost them. Some of them came back, some of them didn't. And a lot of people that didn't follow through were actually upset because the interest rates went up for a while, remember, yep. when they came back down? Yeah. Right, but enough about that. Okay, so now I know that, first off, 15 and a pro 15 or 16, there probably would have been over 20 had all those closed for your first year. It's incredible. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> probably should, but we did. We did it anyway. <laughs> All right, so your second year, you got some really good stuff going on right now, right? Yeah, second year, I am looking to not only increase um, uh, total total loan value, but as far as units, I'm on track to hit around 30, and that was my goal. Right. Um, and that's that's what that's what we're gonna do. Hell, 30 in hell second high water, year. That's what we're gonna have, so, yeah. um, or more. Yeah, I love, I love it. anymore. I love it, or, or more. So like three a month would be really good. That'd be great, I mean, <laughs> I'm on track. So you are, that's what I'm saying. Yep. Yeah, we just had a coaching call this morning too. It's just, it just coincidentally happened to be the same day. But tell them, like, tell them the story you told us today on the coaching call about the guy from California, San Diego. Sure, sure, sure. Buying the one, you know, tell them about that. That's Absolutely. an incredible story. Yeah, real quick before I get into that, if you're not in Rick's coaching call, you need to be, please. I mean, it's helped my uh, business grow, so thank you very thank much you. for that. You can see why you just love telling And the accountability is great, plus being able to actually, you know, springboard stuff off Rick, it's been incredible. Thank you very um, much. I but appreciate that. this morning, the story that I told this morning is I had a renter come to me from California. So um, again, thank you, California, for providing uh, clients to my business. Um, Who said, what's the guy's name was responsible? Uh, Mr. Newsom, I believe. <laughs> Mr. Newsom, Governor Newsom, best realtor in California. Thank you for the referral. Um, we joke about that. <laughs> uh, he came to me from San Diego. He was looking to rent out here. He, his plan was to move his business from San Diego to California um, just because of the tax changes. And if you're in California and you're watching, your taxes did go up. Uh, but he came to me as a renter and I presented to him not only rental listings, but as well as purchase listings. And the numbers right now, brilliant, just make sense to purchase over renting. Um, once he saw some listings, he's like, I could actually purchase that with this much down and this is gonna be my interest rate for a jumbo loan. It was it was a no-brainer for him. Yeah, especially moving from moving, he's moving his complete business. Yes. So so what did he end up buying? He ended up buying a one point five five million dollar home in Red Rock Country Club, and it is absolutely pristine and gorgeous. I love it. I love Red Rock. It's a beautiful place. Absolutely. Gorgeous. I live not too far from it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful, and you know what? The golf course was great there too. We could play golf. So because of the savings and so forth, what was the line he told you? I think is great. Um, Something about. He's, he's actually moving his whole company here too, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's moved his whole company in taxes, I think, right? right? Yeah. So just from moving his company from California to Nevada, 
the amount that he's going to save at the end of this tax, you know, the fiscal year, he's going to be able to buy this house for free, essentially. Um, and that would have been money that he would have had to give in California. Right. And that was one of the major motivating factors for this for this gentleman. Um, just brass tacks. Nothing right. personal, it's just business. You know? Yeah. Well, I work for my ferry. He built this company here for pretty much the same reason, too. So it's uh, a lot of companies, and smaller companies like that, that's a small company, yeah. are doing that. Now, we love California. California's great. A lot of people love living in California. It's a beautiful state. But there are some advantages with our little tri, uh, you know, our three states here, California, Arizona, and Nevada. But yeah. moving from, anyway, so, and you know, how many people is he moving here? Well, he wants to move his entire business. He's got around 50 to 60 employees. So, um, you know. And what did he ask you? He asked me if I did relocation packages, and I said yes, absolutely. Yeah, we role played that. I gave him a script that goes like this. Let me think about it, yes. <laughs> That's how you remember it. Uh, really? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me, yes. You don't have to think about that. No, no, not at all. All right, so tell him a little, okay, so 16 closings your first year, you're gonna go over 30 your second year, so how do you do that? Like, how do you, what do you do to do that many deals? Well, it's different than when I first started, right? right. Remember when I first started our yes. coaching call? I didn't sell anything for the first three, maybe three and a half months. That's good for everybody to hear, by the way. Okay. I mean, it was it was hard, but I was putting in the time. I think the biggest thing that I took away from my first year to my second year is discipline will take you further than motivation ever will. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. So motivation feels good. You know, when you first get your license, you're motivated, right? right? Because it's easy. It feels good. Um, but in those times when it's hard, you're not selling, you're not making those appointments, or maybe you are making those appointments, but you're not signing contracts, you get burnt a little bit. Yeah. And I did too. But it was discipline, you know, continuing to make those phone calls, continuing to do those open houses, continuing to just follow up and beat the SOI. You know, there's no secret agents. Everyone in my family knows that I'm a realtor. Right. Um, and I think that is the necessary steps when you look at top producers here in the office, or just even around the globe, what, you know, there's gonna be days where they're motivated, and right. there's gonna be days where they're not motivated, but what sets them apart from somebody who produces and actually closes yeah. is discipline. And that means, and let me, I'll take it one step further, and what he means is, even on the days you don't feel like doing it, you still do it. Exactly. It's easy on the days you feel like it. Easy, because you're motivated. Yeah, yeah. That's what discipline means to me, doing it even on the days you don't feel like it, and then all of a sudden that discipline kicks in, yep. I, my favorite word, serendipity, and then all of a sudden it comes together. Yep. And then you're like, wow, what? Even, a, even a week later you can go from, what the hell am I doing in this business to, oh my God, I got three deals in escrow. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Yep, yep, yep. yep. I, I often like to tell myself, when things get frustrating, because I used to get mad, quit, maybe stay home for a day, then I realized every time they get super frustrating, your minutes, a day, a couple of days away from a breakthrough, as long as you keep going. You gotta keep going. Just keep, keep going. spinning the wheels a little bit, little bit by little bit. You know, find yourself an accountability partner, find another agent that's in your office, and let them know when you're struggling. Like this is a, in my opinion, right, this is a profession where you need to surround yourself with not only hungry, but disciplined uh, agents in your office. Be like, hey, I'm struggling. I didn't get that appointment. Let's role play, let's practice, let's increase our salesmanship. Right. Um, because ultimately, and if you want to ask me to do that too, I mean, by all means, please, my phone number is up on there. I would be more than happy. I love answering questions. If, I mean, again, I'm not the most tenured agent, but I have, you know, my first year, I did see a lot of crazy stuff, you know, yeah. even a visit to the a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got my license. I mean, I've got four pending, five pendings, and then the next day I have zero, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, you kept a great attitude and kept rolling. You know, it was, that was hard when a deal does fall out, but... You just gotta keep going, you know what I mean? And it happened in car sales, and it's gonna happen here too. When it does happen, it's not how you just, it's not how it makes you feel. You just have to continue to move. Gotta keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Well, think about it. A lot of people that are out there that are in my training, that are in my coaching, are people year, two, three years in the business. And it's good for them to hear that because, especially since you didn't close a deal your first three or four months, and then you closed 15, 16, you know, in the last seven, eight months of the year, which is incredibly awesome. Yeah. But you had to build that momentum first. Right. Right? Yep. And, and and you even changed. Like you started phones, all expired, banging out context, and you kind of mix it up a little bit. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tell me a little about that. Because sure. Good. So when I first got my license, I started going to all the different classes that the brokerage had available. I started talking to all the different producers. And what I did is I started emulating them, right? Works for them. It should work for me. Right. right? And it did to an extent. 
Um, what Rick is talking about, when I started to mix it up, it's when I started to really take possession of this business. Like, hey, this is how I want to sell. This is how I want to generate clients. And once I had that like mini revelation in month like three, that's when stuff started to right. really click and get traction for me, you know, because like when I first started those months, I was doing like four, maybe five hours of expired prospecting, right? Yeah. Prospecting, not cold calling, prospecting. He's and, uh, I hate the word cold calling. <laughs> yeah. Those two words together. You never cold calling in real estate. You never, never, never. It's all, it's all hot, baby. Um, but uh, it just was that type of, of lead gen was not for me. So I started to mix it up, did some open houses, did some SOI stuff. It was when I really started to focus on SOI. So if you're a newer agent out there, please focus on SOI and don't be afraid to ask for referrals. Um, that's when it really started to, to click. And after that third month, maybe a couple weeks, I had like three or four, just like that. I mean, it was, yeah. it, it was incredible. Yeah, so when, you, know, uh, you start out by trying, there's five lead sources. So I think it's smart. Andrew tried all five. He, then he kind of developed, my personality is more around this way, so he developed his way of doing it. But I think you need to try them all. I mean, at least I do. I think you need to try them all till you can get down into the lane that's most comfortable and getting the best results for you, right? Exactly, yeah. When I first started and I did the success series with the book of everything, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I've sold cars over the phone. I'm gonna sell houses over the phone. So I'm gonna call expireds, bizbos, all that good stuff, you know, geo leads, um, everything over the phone. I'm just gonna start banging lines. And um, it was not what I expected. And I thought I was going to not like open houses, but I ended up loving the face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. Um, in fact, my first deal was from an open house. So there you go. There you have it. I love it. I love it too. Okay, so, um, and I, this has been awesome. And I, what I wanted to do next is, okay, so now you've been, you've been doing this for, this is your second calendar year. Yep. Right, 30 deals. Now, a lot of people out there have been in the business even longer, they think 30 deals, wow, or more, that's incredible, in a year, and it is. Okay, so tell them, uh, like, if you could do this all over again, or whatever, what would be the three most important things that you tell them to focus on? Sure, if I was speaking to myself, you know, through like a time portal, and I can Andrew. say, hey, <laughs> Andrew Kozlowski, one, two, three, um, the first point would be to create a support system. Um, you know, fortunately for me, uh, even during this time, I have a wonderful wife who supports me, this business. I know, just kidding. Three beautiful kids. Especially I have, have big hair. Yeah, Harper. I have <laughs> lovely, I surround myself with people like Rick, other agents in the office. That is going to be paramount because you need to grow, right? You, and you need to grow faster than you, faster than what most people think, mm -hmm. right? Because your salesmanship, when it comes to persuasion, dealing with different personality types, mm -hmm. role playing is huge. That is, those are skills that need to be grown, right? So if you're out there and you're listening to yourself and you're or listening to me and you're like, I don't like role playing. There's no point. It's not organic. Um, like 50% of that is right, but at the same time, you will run into those questions where somebody at a listing appointment says, "Well, what's your commission?" Right? At that point what you need to be trained and equipped. So surround yourself with support system and role play. Okay. Second thing is just discipline, right? Discipline. It's I great. That one. It's great to be motivated, but discipline is going to take you further in anyone's career. I mean, just look at the people who've been doing it for, you know, I'd say five plus years, yeah. right? Just even five plus years is impressive to me because they get into a rhythm. They know what works for them and they stick to it. Um, third thing is, is just have fun. It really is. There's yeah. so many times where, when I first went to listing appointments, I remember my first listing appointment, it was an expired for around like $860,000. Wow. Yeah. That was your first appointment? My first, very wow. first listing appointment. And I was so nervous that they just ate, they just ate me up. They knew that I was a new agent, like about halfway through the listing presentation, they said, hey, you're a new agent, aren't you? And I'm like, yes, I am. And there's nobody who's gonna work harder than me. Um, but since then, my listing presentation has changed. I'm much more, comfortable with with how I present um, and I am who I am on the phone you know in the office and I think that's really important because yeah. you can somebody people can tell like even other agents you can tell when you're being disingenuous is that right. a word that's yeah. a word yeah, it's, it's close enough. oh yeah it's close enough close yeah. enough but you can tell when you're no, not being so, like that. Yeah. genuine right and I think that is very important right. for authentic. everyone authentic yes yeah. okay um, that was easier for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> so just be yourself and have fun. You know, it's a party. Welcome to the party. You know, we're all here. Everyone's a realtor in this office, obviously. Um, just have fun to you. 
Yeah, and we have some great offices too, and some great support, like Andrew was saying. Plus, but you had you know, the great thing about you is that you just keep charging anyway. So all those um, learning opportunities—that's what that, that appointment was. Yeah, you went in there, you got your clock cleaned a little bit, but you—I'm never going to let that happen. No, nope. that's exactly what I said. You get yeah. in the car, you got like the cold sweats going on. You put all you put your contract that isn't signed in the, in the passenger seat, and you think to yourself. I'm going to be ready for my next one. Yeah, but you got to go sure. through that. You do. Yeah, as long as you take it positive like you did, you got to go through that. And you can tell, you know, when he's mentioning personality style, role playing, inflection, all that stuff is stuff you can practice. The great thing about real estate is it's like, and I'm not, we're not trying out for the NBA or the NFL. We don't have to be 6'9, don't have to be. Everything in real estate that you need to develop is a trait. It's not necessarily a talent, it's something you can develop. Right over time, if you practice, so you can never say, "Well, that's not me." But it could be if you decided to, you know, to increase your goals, make money, whatever it is. It's, and then remember, it's not just about money. I believe, like, the business is more fun now than it was a year ago. Right? Oh, absolutely. Why? Oh, because well, I'm working, right. and you have deals going on, yeah. and you feel worthy, and you feel right. Yes. And when you're doing all this, and you're not getting anything yet, that's the toughest part. But when it starts kicking in, and you start getting a return on investment. All of a sudden, it's a fun business. Yes. And it is fun. Yes. It started with that first win. It yeah. started with the first win. Get after your first win. It's out there. It's out there for everyone, um, you know, for newer agents and even older agents. There's wins out there, um, and it's your responsibility to go out there and make it happen. Absolutely. I'm gonna, we're going to finish on that. That was awesome. Thank you very much for taking your time today, my man. Hey, awesome thank stuff. you. Thanks for having me. And you too can do that if you want to. It depends. You know, you have high goals, and you started with high goals. Mm -hmm. But whatever your goals are, you, you, you want to sell 10, you want to sell 15, you want to sell 100, you know, it's possible if you just start down the road. And remember, folks, we're in a very tight inventory market. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. March, April, May, and June, for most of our markets, is where 60 65% of the listings for the year Come on the market. So even your buyers, like we're, you have like four buyers here about yeah, the contract. Right? I do now, right? Yeah. So make it easier. Or just go knock neighborhoods and find the, you know, the houses for them too. You can do that. Yeah. So many things you can do. Thanks for your time, my man. Thank you. Appreciate everybody. We'll see you next week.